Well, hello once again, and welcome to Friday. We uh, are ending uh, this week where our focus is on from death to life as we approach uh, this coming Sunday, which is the fifth Sunday of Lent. In these uh, daily times uh, of uh, coming together for 15 minutes and then getting alone with God uh, for silent meditation and journaling, uh, we'll continue uh, through uh, and leading into uh, Easter. So uh, well, let's go ahead and get started once again with our world's greatest collection of church jokes. This one's called A Little Off the Sides. Right in the middle of his sermon, verbose Pastor Phillips noted Brother Bob get up and leave the sanctuary. Then he returned before the closing hymn. Afterwards, Pastor Phillips asked, where did you go, Brother Bob? I went to get a haircut, was Bob's reply. Well, why didn't you do that before the service, asked the reverend. Because I didn't need one then. <laughs> Pastor Bob must be, uh, or Pastor uh, Phillips must be very verbose. And went on forever. Well, let's uh, go to the Lord in prayer and invite the Holy Spirit into our time here uh, today. And then we'll begin with Psalm 32. Lord God, we thank you so much for this time that we've had together this week. We know that our spirits have been renewed. You have drawn our hearts unto yourself. Uh, you have helped us to see how the work that you've prepared for us is a delight as we uh, partner with you to build your kingdom here on earth. Your, your uh, commands to us, your requests for obedience are sweet. Or we want to serve you with cheerfulness and gladness, the same cheerfulness and gladness that we see children have. We want to delight in you and rejoice in you and in all that brings you honor and glory and praise. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, as I said, Psalm 32 is our uh, psalm this week. And uh, I'm going to read it from the New American Standard Bible today. Uh, this is titled, Blessed of, Blessedness of Forgiveness and of Trust in God. Psalm of David. How blessed is he whose wrongdoing is forgiven whose sin is covered. How blessed is a person whose guilt the Lord does not take into account and whose spirit there is no deceit. When I kept silent about my sin, my body wasted away through, all, or through my groaning all day long. For day and night, your hand was heavy upon me. My vitality failed as with the dry heat of summer. I acknowledged my sin to you and I did not hide my guilt. I said, I will confess my wrongdoings to the Lord, and you forgave the guilt of my sin. Therefore, let everyone who is godly pray to you in a time when you may be found. Certainly in a flood of great waters, they will not reach him. You are my hiding place. You keep me from trouble. You surround me with songs of deliverance. I will instruct you and teach you in the way which you should go. I will advise you with my eye upon you. Do not be like the horse or like the mule, which have no understanding whose trappings include bit and bridle, to hold them in check. Otherwise, they will not come near to you. The sorrows of the wicked are many, but the one who trusts in the Lord, goodness will surround him. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, you righteous ones, and shout for joy, all you who are upright in heart. Well, that was from Psalm uh, 32, and that was our psalm reading for uh, this week. So hopefully, uh, as you we've read through that in a different translation each day, you've had lots of words and phrases to jot down, or maybe it was one in particular that you spent the entire week on. But uh, for today, we're going to read then our daily scripture reading, which comes from Colossians 3, 1 through 17. So if you want to turn to Colossians 3, 1 through 17, I'll be reading in the New International Version. And again, Colossians 3, 1 through 17. This is called uh, Living as Those Made Alive in Christ. Since then you have been raised with Christ, set your heart on things above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you died, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, 
sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. Because of these, the wrath of God is coming. You used to walk in these ways in the life you once lived, but now you must also rid yourselves of all such things as these, anger, rage, malice, slander, and filthy language from your lips. Do not lie to each other, since you have taken off your old self with its practices and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge in the image of its creator. Here there is no Gentile or Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave or free, but Christ is all and is in all. Therefore, as God's chosen people, <clears throat> holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you, and over all these virtues put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace, and be thankful. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and psalms or songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Well, what word or phrase may have jumped out there uh, to you in those scriptures? If uh, you know, there was uh, not something immediate, go back and read it over again. And now that you've got the reference, Colossians 3, 1 through 17, read it out loud uh, and read it uh, uh, two to three times. And uh, eventually there'll be a word or phrase that will jump out. Our reading uh, for reflection is a little bit longer again. It's uh, from, from God in Search of Man by Abraham Joshua Heschel. And so here is what he writes. <clears throat> the world needs more than the secret holiness of individual inwardness. It needs more than sacred sentiments and good intentions. God asks for the heart because he needs the lives. It is by lives that the world will be redeemed, by lives that beat in concordance with God, by deeds that outbeat the finite charity of the human heart. Man's power of action is less vague than his power of intention, and an action has intrinsic meaning. Its value to the world is independent of what it means to the person performing it. The act of giving food to a helpless child is meaningful, regardless of whether or not the moral intention is present. God asks for the heart, and we must spell our answer in terms of deeds. It would be a device of conceit, if not presumption, to insist that purity of the heart is the exclusive test of piety. Perfect purity is something we rarely know how to obtain or how to retain. No one can claim to have purged all the dross even from his finest desire. The self is finite, but selfishness is infinite. God asks for the heart, but the heart is oppressed with uncertainty in its own twilight. God asks for faith, and the heart is not sure of its own faith. It is good that there is a dawn of decision for the sight of the heart, deeds to objectify faith, definite forms to verify belief. The heart is often a lonely voice in the marketplace of living. Man may entertain lofty ideals and behave like the ass that, as the saying goes, carries gold and eats thistles. The problem of the soul is how to live nobly in an animal environment, how to persuade and train the tongue and the senses to behave in agreement with the insights of the soul. The integrity of life is not exclusively a thing of the heart. It implies more than consciousness of the moral law. The innermost chamber must be guarded at the uttermost outposts. Religion is not the same as spiritualism. What man does in his concrete physical existence is directly relevant to the divine. Spirituality is the goal, not the way of man. 
In this world, music is played on physical instruments. And to the Jew, the mitzvah or the instruments on which the holy is carried out. If man were only mind, worship and thought would be the form in which to commune with God. But man is body and soul, and his goal is so to live that both his heart and his flesh should sing to the living God. So it kind of puts in perspective uh, the heart attitude needed uh, towards our deeds, uh, making sure that those are coming from the right, uh, the right attitude of heart. Well, we come to that time where once again, uh, we can lift up whatever silent prayer requests we have. And then I'll close this out with the uh, hymn, hymn uh, from Charles Wesley and the benediction. Let's pray. Lord God, once again, we are so thankful that we serve an all-knowing, all-powerful, yet holy God. And in all your power and knowledge and holiness and omnipresence, you still care deeply for each and every one of us. You care about our needs. You desire wholeness, life, and flourishing for each and every human being on earth. And you've asked us, those of us who have faith in you and believe in you and love you, to partner with you in helping to reach all of your lost children, all those who have gone astray, all those who do not yet know you. And so we thank you for that privilege of knowing you and helping others to know you as well. Lord, we lift up all of those who have been on our hearts this week uh, and ask you to uh, fill every need that is there according to your will, Lord. You know what they are um, as we've lifted them up individually each and every day. And so we uh, know that those prayers have entered into your throne room and that you've already began to answer. And we thank you for that. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Well, again, our hymn this week was, O oh, Love Divine, What Hast Thou Done? Uh, written by Charles Wesley. O oh, Love Divine, What Hast Thou Done? The incarnate God hath died for me. The Father's co-eternal Son bore all my sins upon the tree. The Son of God for me hath died. My Lord, my love is crucified is crucified for me and you to bring us rebels near to God. Believe, believe the record true. Ye all are bought with Jesus' blood. Pardon for all flows from his side. My Lord, my love is crucified. Behold him, all ye that pass by, the bleeding prince of life and peace. Come, sinners, see your Savior die, and say, was ever grief like his? Come, fill with me his blood applied. My Lord, my love is crucified. Amen. That again by Charles Wesley. Well, I'm glad you joined me again uh, this week, and we will be right back here again on Monday. Uh, so I cannot wait to, jo to uh, join with you again uh, then. Until then, uh, have a great weekend, and blessings on you, and we'll see you uh, later.